<laughs> Absolutely. When we've said it's not partisan. George Bush is a puppet. The Democrats are puppets. It's about the new world order. Appreciate your call, Rod. Dean in Canada, you're on the air. Uh, good afternoon, Alex. I've uh, got a, a bit of a, a important news to uh, relate to the rest of the listeners out there. Last evening in Manitoba, on board a Greyhound bus from Brandon to Portage La Prairie, uh, a uh, man in his early 20s, uh, without any warning, attacked another. He was, sitting, he was sitting right next to who happened to be asleep listening to his headphones. At any rate, um, uh, following uh, the, uh, during the attack, the uh, upon being alerted by the blood curdling scream, the driver pulled the Greyhound bus over, and as soon as everybody was off, after some uh, struggle with the attacker who was trying to get off as well, everybody managed to make it off. The bus driver disabled the bus to make sure it couldn't go anywhere and made sure that it was all locked up. And at that point, realizing he had nowhere to go, the attacker proceeded to, to decapitate the person he was he had just attacked. Immediately prior to the attack and immediately following the attack, the attacker uh, maintained utter composure, the, the likes of which you can only expect uh, after uh, waking up. He was, he was utterly emotionless, and he was pretty, kept himself pretty much isolated from anybody on board. Now, that's just, just my opinion, but, but uh, on top of uh, the call now in the media for registering of large knives, uh, I think that this is just a, a trial balloon to see how many... Uh, how we can be shocked by something like this, and I think this may be a, a taste of, of things to come on this side. On your side, we're seeing shootings like crazy. Here it's nice, because we really don't that have that many guns legally. Well, in so, England, they've brought in masses of third-world populations who historically have been disarmed and don't have guns, so they're good with knives. And there have been, in England, as many as seven knife murders in a weekend in London. And so the police bring out scanners. They start shaking down old ladies. Again, they disarm the population. They're calling for registering all knives, home inspections. You know, don't arm the people. Don't let the people protect themselves, but, oh, arm the police because they need to protect themselves. By the way, I'm not against that. Just don't tell me I can't defend myself. And, yes, I've seen them call for you know restricting knives in Canada. There are uh, psychopaths. There are people who are not mind-controlled through the classical uh, means of it who, who can do things like that. Uh, but I have to tell you, and again, there's even been mainstream TV specials on this. More than 10,000 high school girls and boys, and some were college students, but most high school girls and boys, families would sign their children. It was mainly middle-class families is who they wanted in the 50s, 60s, and 70s for Dr. Ewing Cameron. Now, for those that don't believe this and think it's only in movies and the Manchurian Candidate, no, it's real. This is only one program we know about of, of, of hundreds we know about. And then there's still thousands that we know a little bit about. But hundreds of programs, this one program, over uh, 30 years, from the 50s into the 70s, we are t uh, right up into the early 80s, I believe it stopped about, it was 81. Uh, big university in Canada, I forget the exact one, you can look up Dr. Ewing Cameron, had an entire CIA building, an entire psychiatry building, run by Dr. Ewing Cameron and a bunch of... U.S. military officers in Canada. You can go pull it up. That shows on it. It's all over mainstream news. And they would take them and first give them electroshock therapy, sometimes hundreds of electroshock therapies, but generally it was only a few dozen, to blank out the memory and the mind. Then for six months, and it was a formula, they would, and this is what they developed over years, they would put headphones on, but in a straight jacket, tied to a bed, uh, with a bedpan under you, and then several times a week giving you LSD, PCP, uh, peyote, all three together, uh, other drugs, <clears throat> drugs that cause extreme pain and horror while you're on the hallucinogens. hallucinogens. They can give you drugs to make you feel dirty, you know, uh, painful, horrible, frustrated, make you have a really bad trip while you're wearing a mask for sensory deprivation, your hands are tied in on yourself, hardcore form of torture for months, headphones pumping audio in of Dr. Ewing Cameron and others saying, you will submit, you will do as this, says, now I'm going to. And then after six months of that, you have all these pain triggers where when you hear a certain keyword, that could be any keyword, but they want to make it a couple of words string together that will never be strung together accidentally so you can't be triggered. Uh, now, now, this is the Chinese-slash-North Korean model they got in the 50s brought here. It was actually an ancient form of 
Chinese torture where they would do this with drugs and, and, and blindfolds and stress positions, but much more. See, I said I take a lot of calls, but this is a key area he just brought up. And I want to educate people on this. And don't believe me, folks. This is too important. Go check it out with keyword searches. You'll find all the mainstream info and declassified uh, church hearing documents, MK Ultra uh, coming out, MK Naomi and others. And so they would then give them a keyword for pain, then a keyword where they would give them a drug, generally opiates, to knock them out and make the pain go away. So now you have a Pavlovian response. You ever seen a woman who's beaten by her husband? Uh, you know, say a waitress comes over and you move quick to get your wallet out, and she flinches and puts her hand up. That's a woman who's getting the you know the you know what kicked out of her every week. Well, that's basic Pavlovian, where somebody who's beaten, if somebody raises a hand at them, they flinch. Or somebody who's been in the military, who's who's been in combat, somebody makes a flinch and they attack you and do a judo move and slam you down on your head. You know, there can also be an opposite response. A lot of cops who've seen a lot of action are military. That's why they'll flip out on somebody who makes a wrong move because they've just been through a lot in their life and they've instinctively, you know, developed ways to protect themselves. And it's like messing with a crocodile. But 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 with women, they found men they could have some mind control. They could carry out some missions. But they needed to be drugged at the time of the mission for it to be even 90% operation success. This is all declassified. And then after six months of torture and audios and stress positions, they would then start giving them keywords for pleasure, keywords for good. And then they would give them, over the, another six months, a new identity, who they were, a new history of who they were with audio being pumped in. Now with brain chips and, 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 and hologram goggles and uh, virtual reality, the torture is a million times worse. Uh, and, 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 and more control. This is what we know about that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. And we know uh, that there was a mass shooting, and now this was in 99, Larry Ashbrook. He goes into a uh, Baptist church during a youth meeting, shoots 20-something people, kills, I think it was 10 of them, then kills him, sits down calmly, sticks the gun in his mouth with total control and blows the back of his head off. Now, he had been writing the paper and saying, help me. But they thought he was a schizophrenic because there's so many saying this who, who are just, you know, mentally ill, I mean, and, and, and aren't under mind control. Or maybe they are. Who knows? He was writing letters saying, help me. He was telling neighbors. And it turned out he'd been in black ops in the Navy. And this came out in the Fort Worth Star Telegram. And it turned out that neighbors saw him drug out of the house by men and put in vans. Friends, this is over a year period because he was breaking down. His programming was breaking down. He was a sleeper who was breaking down. Men don't work well. They tend to commit suicide or break down or go crazy or completely break their programming. It's harder to control a man uh, in all the major studies we know about, all these horrible, grisly experiments. The Nazis found similar things out. But they can do better, they say, with adolescents, with children, and especially with women. And so with these primitive techniques that he accentuated and kind of souped up, Dr. Ewing Cameron, he could... Uh, program someone to do whatever they were told with a new identity and be a completely new person. And we know that happened with McVeigh. Uh, we know that happened with Larry Ashbrook. Buford Furrow, again, did live at the naval base, excuse me, the uh, Air Force base. I'm going from memory here. I'm pulling this up. That did end up coming out uh, in, in that particular Air Force base up in Washington State. He did have national security uh, numbers and emails and security codes on him when police got him. Because these guys don't operate at 100%. They don't follow orders exactly. They're, they're, they're out of it. Uh, we know that Sirhan Sirhan, with that same primitive program, the woman comes in, the woman in the polka dot dress, this is mainstream news, she gives him the amnesiac, he goes into the trance, he's given the code word to go ahead. Again, men with the primitive programming need a drug Generally, a halcyon type amnesic, which, by the way, Wired Magazine in an article titled The Marshall Plan went into that and admitted they are drugging and testing mind control drugs on the troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. We know they did that in Vietnam. So, there, I just blew 10 minutes on that, but your question and the point you make is, is, is a very good one. And the complete sereneness after he did it is what is suspicious, and I appreciate your call. Now, we are seeing mind control like in women dancing naked on top of their house in front of police. I hate to talk like this, but this was in the case in, in one in Texas, I remember like eight years ago, cutting her breast off. And the cops pull up and watch her slice her own breast off. Uh, women chopping their baby's arms off. Women driving their babies off ca cars. And every time another woman does it, other women the same week or month do it. And what are these women all on? 
What are these mass shooting men? All on, in every case, everyone I've ever seen. They're on psychotropic serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are in the hallucinogen class. Don't believe me? Go to Prozac's website, Eli Lilly. Click on the five-page, I looked it up just a week ago, the five-page full drug insert in tiny print. Don't be lazy. Read it for yourself. It says causes psychotic breaks, violence, uh, causes people to, to, to go into psychopathic rages. People who've used LSD a lot in their life will tell you, yeah, the first 50 times I took it, it was great. But that 51st time or that 100th and 10th time, you know, I went completely psychopathic. The people eat their fingers, jump off of windows, kill their families. They've been testing this on special forces. They've been coming back killing their families. And I know there's special forces listening. And I know there's old special forces listening. And you know about buddies that went off for a test and, they, and people died. Your government is psychopathic mad scientists. And you better wake up to that right now.